everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Stephanie and I'm the blogger behind BrighterDarling.com. Today we are doing my second trimester update or bump date, which is crazy because the first trimester went by so quickly and the second trimester, so much has happened. So I'm really excited to share with you all the changes and um, things that I'm learning as I'm going through this process. So um, what I wanna do is just address like a lot of basic questions that you'll find in bump date or update videos then go through some questions that I got from you guys on my Instagram, which you can follow me below. And um, after that, I wanna just address some notes I took throughout the second trimester and talk about that. So let's get into the basic question. So currently today is it's July 27th and I am entering my 29th week. So I just finished the second trimester last week, which is crazy. Um, my total weight gain as of today is 21 pounds and we're going to talk really in depth about weight gain and body image in this video so um just keep that in mind i really have a lot to say about that uh stretch marks so i haven't gotten any stretch marks on the bump i have gotten one stretch mark on my boob um on only one boob but that is just i guess very typical. I mean, I didn't have very big boobs to start this pregnancy. And so um, the fact that I got a stretch mark on my boob, it's kind of a novelty to me <laughs> because it's just so funny because I just never had big boobs. So as far as like if I'm doing anything for the stretch mark relief. So as you guys probably may know, there's really no um, way to not get stretch marks. It's really genetic but I definitely have been using um, lotions and creams and oils since religiously every single day since I started the second trimester. I basically just use any thicker body lotion or body butter and what, ooh, sorry, and what I've been doing is mixing in about five to six drops of bio oil in it and then that's what I've been using. Um, and I'm really focusing on my legs, especially like my thighs, my butt, my hips, and my abdomen because those are A, the places on my body that I already carry weight more, and B, those are also the places when you're pregnant tend to get larger faster. So, um, lucky me. But yeah, that's my trick. I'm not buying like fancy pantsy body butters. I'm just using like whatever lotion I have and mixing in bio oil. What I also am doing is dry brushing. That's my stretch mark tips. I can't tell you if it's really doing anything, but that's what we're doing. Um, as far as maternity clothes go, I did pick up a few new things. Um, not too crazy. But I did purchase, I think in the first trimester, I did mention that I bought a pair of shorts from Target. I don't really love them, but I'm wearing them. I did get a second pair of denim shorts at um, Motherhood Maternity, and they're super cute. They're in my wash right now, so I'll have to put a picture up here. But they're cutoff style. They're fairly short, but if you're under 5'5", five five, I think they're going to look great because they are shorter and they're not going to make you look as stumpy. I just find them really flattering and they're nice and loose on the thigh so that's even more flattering so I love those and I've been wearing them basically with just plain tank tops like this some of these are maternity some of these aren't tank top denim shorts flip-flops and usually like either a cardigan or some kind of kimono throw over just to make me feel like I'm not just like all bump all out there I did a few weeks ago purchase these super cute Skechers sneakers at Burlington Coat Factory. They're basically walking sneakers, but what I love about them is there is no lace, like they're slip-ons. So um, it's gotten a lot harder to like bend over and like tie my sneakers on certain days, like certain days are harder than others, but I'm sure in the third trimester it'll get worse. Um, so I wanted to get myself a pair of sneakers to take walks and stuff and do some basic workouts at home without having to bend over and tie my shoes, which sounds so lazy or very pregnant I can't one or the other <laughs> and then I did pick up a few dresses so we did our maternity shoot last week in North Carolina when we were on our baby moon and um, I'll try to insert like a pick or two but just in case I can't I got this pretty like sage green um, body conscious dress you'll see it has like the little like ruching here um, but it's short and it's extremely soft very like nice material but I really love 
uh, the color. Like this is like, I love this kind of color, like a sea foam, sage green. And then the other dress I wore for the maternity shoot is not maternity I got it at Nordstrom. It's free people. And it's just this like super floral, flowy maxi dress. And since it's not maternity, I'm finding that I can wear flowy things, but they can't be maternity. If I wear a flowy dress and it's a maternity dress, it looks like a giant tent on me because I'm only 5'3", and I was already kind of curvy to start. So, um, I mean, and not curvy as in like heavy. I just mean like curvy, like I have hips, I had a butt. Um, so with pregnancy, I've obviously put on more weight and those curves are like exacerbated. So what's great about it and what makes it nice and pregnancy friendly is the straps are adjustable and the whole back through to the front has the smocking detail. So it's nice and stretchy and very flattering to the body and to like the torso area. And then you can't tell, you're not, it's going to be hard to tell on this, but it does have a pretty high side slit, which is nice and like sexy and like since I'm short, it makes me feel like you can see my legs a little bit and I'm not just like a big drape. The other dress I purchased is this, again, a very basic tank dress. This is from Motherhood Maternity. I got this for, I want to say, it was either $7.99 or $10, but it's just all ribbed from top to bottom. It's meant to be worn before and after pregnancy, and since it's just plain black, I can wear this in the fall and probably after she, I have her with like a sweater and boots and stuff. Next question, is this my belly button in or out? It's still in, I've had an any. Uh, it's definitely, my belly button's definitely getting flatter, but it's still very much an any. like it's not popped out at all. So I'm thankful for that because I think it'll be so weird if and when it does pop out. So we'll see. As far as sleep is going, I'm still sleeping okay. Like the one thing that I'm not doing so hot at is going to the bathroom 400 times a night but that's also partially my fault because i wait until like the end of the day to drink the rest of the allotted water i'm trying to take in like after dinner which is stupid so it is partially my fault that i'm peeing so often at night uh, and we're talking like five to seven times a night i'm getting up to pee but that's because a lot of times i'm chugging two bottles of water from like 9 to 11 pm i really shouldn't do that so uh yeah. Do I miss anything? So I would say the two things I miss the most are one, being able to drink a glass of wine or have a beer. Like when we were on my baby moon, my husband, um, I wanted to stop at this brewery with him. We went there and it was kind of lame because I just sat there like a potato while he was trying like the beers. And um, even just like, there's definitely been a lot of stressful moments in the second trimester and like just things that you have to do. And I would have loved to just go home and have a glass of wine, but you can't do that. So I'm looking forward to wine and alcohol again. Um, as far as movement goes, yes. So around, I believe it was around 19 weeks was when I first felt like the flutters happening. And it literally felt like a flopping around fish in my stomach. Like people were saying, oh, it feels like butterflies. No, this legit felt like a fish was flopping like on like a boardwalk or like, you know, on a boat, like fish out of water kind of just flopping around and then it's just gotten more and more intense. And now, like I can actually see her do like little kicks or punches like in my stomach, which is funny. Um, she's not actually like pushing my stomach out, but you can definitely see her moving and um, yeah, it's, it's, that's pretty cool. As far as food cravings go, the food aversion, the only thing I'm kind of aver aversion to, aver averse to, smart wording, um, it's been chicken. Like, I just don't care for chicken. Like, the only thing I'll have, I'll maybe have like a Chick-fil-A sandwich once in a while, but like, even the other day, I tried to put like grilled chicken on a salad for dinner and I was like, no, I don't want the chicken. Like, just let me have the salad. And as far as cravings, I'm not really having any serious cravings. Sometimes sweets, like more than normal for me, but um, nothing like crazy, like I'm not making my husband go out and get things. Have I started to show yet? Uh, yeah, yeah, I'd say so. So um, I'll insert a few photos here of like where it popped. Like, so I wasn't really showing, I would say until about 24 four or five weeks so like only within the last month is like been serious growth um, before that I kind of just looked like I ate Chipotle and I was kind of like this is awesome like I'm not really showing 
um, but then she came back with vengeance. And any other symptoms? So the one thing I'm gonna say is that carrying a girl for me has definitely changed my um, body shape. So I'm not one of those women who are like carrying all belly and like super popped out and I think that's what I'm seeing is like a lot of women who are having boys tend to just have just all belly. Like my face looks fine, like my skin looks fine, but like everything is just big. Like she just makes me so wide and yeah, so I would say that like the symptoms that I'm having are just how wide she's making me. I feel like a tree trunk and so puffy. Like the weight gain is not even the thing that bothers me as much as how bloated and puffy I can look from the face and like even in my torso. And like, again, my body type is petite and I also have a short torso. So like the weight gain is all in a very compact area and just makes me feel like, like a little puff ball. So that kind of has been a very difficult adjustment for someone like me who's always been into health and fitness and like trying to look and feel her best so what I'm reading so there are two books I read in the se second trimester or like one I'm actually still reading so uh, the first one that I totally recommend if you are or you have a friend who's pregnant and is like super neurotic about all the things that you're told not to do or you can't try this or don't do this or like just in general like pregnancy health and where the reasoning behind a lot of it comes from. This book is by Emily Oster. She's an economist and it's called Expecting Better, Why the Conventional Pregnancy Wisdom is Wrong and What You Really Need to Know. So what she did was she basically debunked a lot of the things that were told as pregnant women and went and found out why are we told those things. Not that you don't need to follow your doctor's advice at all, but just be armed and have the information at your disposal to know why your doctor is telling you the things she's telling you. She kind of touches upon a lot of these de debunking things. So like drinking safely during pregnancy, not that there's really safe drinking, but you know, just kind of covering that, talking about why gaining too much weight might be safer than gaining too little, why sushi and cheese aren't so bad, but gardening could be, why bed rest is a terrible idea, and then like the pros and cons of epidurals and like the studies behind, you know, pain management during delivery. Like she just really does a good job of doing what somebody with an economist background would do and like presenting the facts and letting you make the decision rather than just having a doctor or a specialist tell you, don't do this and do this. It's like, but why am I doing these things as a pregnant person? You want to know why. So this book really does a good job of that. The second book I'm reading right now, which is like a Bible, look at this thing. Um, it's the what to expect the first year. Now I was advised to read this before she's born because once she's born, you're kind of going to be flying by the seat of your pants and not have time to be reading, um, about what to do. So I'm doing my best to read as much as I can now. And like, this is my husband where he is in the book, clearly not very far. And then I have my little page saver here. I'm about halfway. Um, but this book is incredible. I will link this one below too. Um, it goes month by month, like what milestones the, the baby should be doing or having, um, what kinds of things you should be doing as a parent to help develop your child. Uh, and it just goes through literally everything. Um, decoding crying and comforting, a whole very intense and large informative section on breastfeeding, baby basics at your house, um, what things you really need for your baby and things you might not really need. Um, a whole comprehensive section on first aid, safety, how to care for preemies, um, you know, just a lot of troubleshooting too, like for things that you don't realize until you're like doing it, like, oh, this isn't working like the way my doctor told me to, like how else can I do it? And I think like having a book like this is much less confusing and much less like um, conflicting than looking up stuff on the internet because we all know the internet has so much information out there and a lot of it is so conflicting that having just like a book like this that was endorsed by doctors to me I'd rather just stick with this book and if I can't find it in this book ask my doctor um, looking forward to so right now the thing I'm most looking forward to is getting her nursery set up so this weekend actually tomorrow Saturday we will finally be getting our furniture delivered well most of it all right so those are like the basic questions 
Uh, I want to get into some of the ones that you guys asked me on Instagram. One of the questions was, how are you dealing with clothing and skin changes? Other weird changes that people don't talk about. Um, so yes, the clothing and waking. Let's get into that in a second. Um, skin changes? No. So luckily for me, my skin has actually been better during pregnancy than before. So I can't complain about my skin. I'm still using the same stuff I talked about in the first trimester regarding like my skincare routine. So there's really not much to share there. Um, but clothing changes for sure. Like, because I am, like I briefly mentioned, five foot three, I have a pear shape and I have a short torso. Pregnancy has been challenging to look cute and fashionable in because those long flowy pregnancy dresses or like empire cup dresses do not look good on me at all. I just don't have, I'm carrying very high so it's been a it's been a struggle for me find like a celebrity or someone that you know who has a similar body frame to you and look up when they were pregnant like the things that they wore because for me i just there's a lot of friends of mine that have been pregnant and i've like looked at the stuff that they're wearing and if i wear that it looks horrible on me so right now what i've learned is i mentioned this i think a little before but um Kourtney Kardashian especially, and Kim Kardashian, um, their body frames, being short and curvy, um, have been what I've tried to look at. More Kourtney, because I'm not really the Kim, like, super glam, very fashionista. More of, like, a Kourtney is my style. Like, neutrals and cute things like that, and some pops of trendy things. But, like, she is carrying more like me. Her torso is shorter than Kim's. Like, um... She carried pretty high. I looked at like her baby shower pictures. Like that is kind of where I'm trying to look at like what style of clothing was she wearing that looked cute on her because that's the kind of body type I'm having. I have my other friend, this is somebody I know. She asked me, how many people have I punched, almost punched for trying to touch the bump? Yeah, that's really annoying. Like even family members, don't touch my stomach. It's so weird. Like, did you touch my stomach before? Like. I'm not a kangaroo. The baby isn't like right here, like hanging out, like give me a snack. Like you don't need to touch my stomach. This is still my stomach and my body. The baby is not out of me. You don't need to like, t and even then I'm sure even more when she's born, I'm not going to want you touching her. Like, I don't know. I just find that so weird. Uh, the other questions are what color themes are you choosing for the little princess for her room? Um, so I'm going to do like a whole nursery room tour, but basically the gist of it is going to be very, very pale lilac, uh, silver and gray is like the majority of the colors. And then there are some hints of elephants and butterflies. <laughs> so, um, and then how am I feeling? Yeah, you know, I feel a little large and like that's not fun, but other than that, I cannot complain. Like I have no complications. I've had no crazy bad symptoms. I've had no real pregnancy scares. So I can't say anything bad about this pregnancy minus the fact that my own vanity is a struggle. <laughs> as far as exercise goes, uh, I am exercising about five, sometimes six days a week for about 25 to 30 minutes. Nothing intense, like pretty low impact. I'm either going for like 30, 40 minute walks um, I do 30 minute Pilates videos a couple days a week. Uh, I also do some YouTube videos I found and I will link those below. I try to just mix it up so I don't get bored, but I try to keep it like under 30 minutes. The stronger you can keep your muscles and like everything in, in good shape, the easier delivery is. So yeah, I would like to have the easiest delivery I can. And also I don't want to take a long time to get back in shape after baby, particularly because I did IVF and I already kind of got pregnant a little heavier than I want it to be just because when you take fertility drugs for so long, it really messes with your weight. So um, once baby is born, I'm going to really want to get into a fitness routine to get myself back at a weight I feel more comfortable with. All right, so let's get into the crux of this, the weight and the body image. So I would say um, the biggest reason that I don't like being pregnant and that sounds so terrible but I really don't like being pregnant has been due to the fact that I've had a couple medical professionals tell me that my weight gain is too much I was told in the beginning that I should put on 25 to 35 pounds because I started at a healthy weight 
So I'm at 21 pounds and I have 11 weeks to go and I'm supposedly gonna put on about 11 pounds. I mean, yeah, I have 11 weeks to go so I'm supposed to put on about a pound a week and that would be 11 pounds. So I should be at about 32 pounds total weight gain, which is still within the limits. And that's with me as we just discussed, exercising five to six days a week and really watching what I'm eating. So what happened to me was I went to, I think it was my, around my 20, it might've been my 20 week appointment at the OB. And the OB that I go to has three OBs and they all rotate because you never really know who's gonna be on call when you deliver. So, you know, they want you to get to know everybody. So I had asked her because not only am I concerned that I wanna be healthy during the pregnancy, but I also have thyroid problems. If my weight fluctuates a lot, that is a number one sign that my thyroid might be off. And I like to know because not only am I having to take care of myself, but also this baby. So if my weight is off, I need to know because I wanna get blood work done to see if my thyroid's messed up. So when I asked the doctor that then, I said, how was my weight gain? And at the time, I think I was, like I said, I, I believe I was 20 weeks and I had put on 13 pounds. And she said, you might wanna slow down on the carbs and watch what you're eating more and up your protein intake and make sure you're exercising. And literally left the room. And my face was just so flabbergasted because she didn't ask me what my diet was like. She didn't ask me if I had exercised or if I was exercising and I just found it really shocking that that was the advice she gave me without really asking about anything. And I left that appointment bawling because at that point I did feel like I was pretty healthy and that I was having a good pregnancy and that really kind of messed me up. So after that, um, I went home and although I thought I was eating really healthy, I went from like eating pretty healthy to eating like I was training for a fitness competition. Like I went from, I was eating like 100 grams of protein a day, which is apparently a little too high for me. Um, like I would, I was eating at least every day, I would have a protein drink, a Greek yogurt, and a protein bar, and plus whatever meats or natural proteins I was getting. So it was a lot of protein, and, um, and then obviously I kept exercising. So the following month, or maybe a few weeks later, I had went to my endocrinologist, to just have my thyroid checked as normal. And um, she had asked me, well, how are you feeling about your weight and your fitness and health? And I said, well, I'm feeling fine. Um, I'm eating about 100 grams of protein a day. And she was like, that is way too much. Like, she was like, that's not, not even good for you or the baby. She's like, 75 grams of protein is more than enough. Um, just try to get more fruits and veggies. But she goes, your weight gain um, you might want to slow down on your weight gain because I really don't want you to put on more than like 21 pounds of this pregnancy. But at that point, so I was like, forget it. I'm never going to, I'm never going to be within that weight because I was already going to be, the point is I was already too close to 20 pounds that I knew I was going to surpass that. And then she was like, well, at the end of the day, you know, you're the one left with the weight to lose. So, but again, after that, it like really messed me up. I felt really bad about myself and, um, I really didn't know what else to do because I was eating really healthy and I'm exercising five to six times a week and this is just what my body's doing. So, um, and as somebody who is obviously into her looks and like wanting to look and feel her best, when you're pregnant, it really is a shock to your system. And the fact that these doctors were now telling me that I was putting on too much weight, even though I'm totally within the guidelines, it was just very confusing and I just didn't know what to do. So. Um, I subbed out the protein and I tried to eat more veggies and whatnot. And then it got just so bad. I was feeling like literally borderline, like I was getting an eating disorder and I've never had an eating disorder in my life. And I certainly don't need to be getting an eating disorder while I was pregnant. Uh, so I just took it upon myself to make an appointment with a actual certified nutritionist and talk with her about my diet and exercise and see what she said. And I'm really glad I did this, but I'm also kind of like so frustrated that I even had to do it in the first place. But she basically said that these doctors are wrong and I'm totally fine. Um, the protein was a little high, so she also scaled back the protein. It just wanted me to eat actually more carbs, um, healthy carbs, but more carbs. I've now been doing that for the last, I would say three weeks now. And my weight gain has been exactly the same still. Like I'm still gaining the way I was even eating high protein. So 
it is what it is. I will say that the fact that those two doctors mentioned to me about the weight gain, it has been a big, contri big contributing reason that I am not enjoying this pregnancy, unfortunately. Um, it just makes me feel ugly. I don't feel pretty. I feel um, sad about the way I look and how um, I see myself. And that's just terrible because nobody should feel like that and like especially during pregnancy like you're already so hormonal you're going through so many changes and then to feel like you don't even want to take pictures of yourself to remember this time is just really sad and it's a shame because i know besides this the comments that they've made to me about the weight gain um i've had a really good pregnancy so far and i can't complain so i mean that's just the reality i just I wanted to bring that up because I don't know maybe other people are going through that and they're being told certain things and like there just becomes a point that you can't control what your body's doing you can eat grass and carrots and fruit all day long like eat super healthy and your body is growing a human and your body is gonna do what it needs to do to keep the human healthy you know my body just is more predisposed to carrying more weight I don't know as long as you're being healthy and exercising your body's going to do what it needs to do. And these doctors, like, they just really need to watch what they say to people because thank God I never had an eating disorder growing up. But had I had one, I can just imagine the kind of toll that would have taken on someone that had an eating disorder because it really affected me. If you're going through that and you're being told that you're putting on too much weight or um, whatever, just do the best you can. That's all I can say. And just try your hardest to ignore that advice as long as it's not affecting the baby because I, I'm so upset that it's ruined this. And like, I think to myself, like, how am I ever going to have a second baby because I just hate being pregnant so much and I don't want to be big and huge and be told that I'm putting on too much weight again. So sorry to end on the down note, but um, let's talk about something fun. Um, I look forward to sharing with you guys my nursery tour and um, baby shower recap and things like that. So if you have any more questions for me regarding the pregnancy, leave them down below in the comments and don't forget to subscribe if you're new. And yeah, thank you so much for watching. I'll talk to you guys later, bye.